Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. No one will be watching us. So many people are searching for where the unraveling of the United States of America began. Began long before the Beatles, but they were the devil in human form. Many people saw them for what they are. They said, why not do it in the road? Well, they're doing it in the road now. You can marry a dog, a horse. Uh, You can become disabled by choice. You can cut an arm off and say it feels better to not have an arm. So to me, the symbol of America is this uh, former uh, athlete, Bruce Jenner, who cut his male part off to feign at being a woman. The man is so psychotic in my estimation. He is so jealous of his sick, ugly daughters and the attention they've garnered without any talent whatsoever, that this man had to up them by cutting off his male parts to become a woman to compete with his own daughters. So this is a mentally ill man in my estimation, yet he's a symbol of, I don't know what, he's put up on every newspaper, magazine, or something wholesome for America, and it symbolizes the death of America. As Islam is rising, America is dying. As Christianity is being crushed around the world, what is rising? Islam. Why is it rising? It's not because the people who are joining Islam necessarily want to cut other people's heads off. It's because they're vomiting from the, from the putrid garbage being spewn down their throats by the vermin of Hollywood. Did I say it clearly enough for you? Write it down and send it immediately to Media Matters. Send it right to George Soros' sick inner ear. They have destroyed this country. They're destroying the entire world. Now, I want to back off. Many people are talking about this because they can't believe it. Becoming disabled by choice. Transabled people feel like imposters in their fully working bodies. So they're cutting off their own body parts. And they're saying that they, want to f- they feel better without that body part. They want to become disabled. And they've made a new name for transability. The desire or the need for a person identified as able-bodied by other people to transform his or her body to obtain a physical impairment. Now, in my day, that's a mental illness. They're put in a mental hospital. They're given medication. They're put in a straitjacket. They're put in a locked ward. And they're guarded around the clock from hurting themselves or others. In this demented, sick Western world of ours, this is now considered a lifestyle choice. What about the concept of white privilege, which, of course, is an invention, a construct of the Marxist left? Here's another story. Teachers complain as chaos reigns in St. Paul's schools, spending millions on white privilege training. A group of psychotic, evil anti-Americans from San Francisco are going around the country teaching poor, innocent teachers and administrators how to deal with achievement and disciplinary issues instead of teaching them how to control the maniacs and the losers who should be locked up in a juvenile detention hall. They say that it's based on white privilege to the unfair detriment of black students. And it cost them a lot of money to learn that. St. Paul's school spent at least the following amounts on consultation services, $137,000 to these sick vermin from San Francisco in 2010, $366,000 to the sick anti-American vermin in 2011, $598,000 given to this diversity training in 2012, $489,000 in 2013. This district is spending all of this money in order to teach teachers how to, to take children who are working hard and tell them that they have white privilege and not to let loser animals, out of control animals, running in the halls, beating people up, punching teachers, and saying that it's a result of white privilege that they're doing this. They're teaching them, in other words, that they're victims. It claims that the American educational system is built around white culture, tradition, and special norms. That is white privilege to the unfair detriment of black students. If this had gone on in the 1940s, Not only would we have lost World War II, can you imagine what this country would have been? Can you imagine all the inventions invented by the privileged white males? For example, those who gave us uh, so many inventions. They should have been ashamed of their brains. They should be ashamed of their inventiveness. How did we get to this point? The question becomes, how did we get here? And moreover, the bigger question is, how do we get away from these sickos? How do we... 
regurgitate the vomit of the radical Marxist left that has now poisoned every aspect of our society. Well, number one, it goes back to the biggest evildoer in the history of the American presidency, Barack Obama. I bring it all back to him. He ran a campaign against white police for years. Him and Holder and Al Sharpton, one of the most evil men in the history of the country, ran a war against police. Al Sharpton did this in New York City for 20 years with a verminous lawyer, a rat lawyer who made tens of millions of dollars suing the NYPD on false claims of racism. And then he took it national. And then they put Obama in the White House. Now, can you believe you're living in a country where a street rat like Al Sharpton actually selected the new attorney general, Loretta Lynch? Do you know what she is? Do you know what she's done in New York? Well, let's put her aside. Let's look at the evil doer himself. The country was in bad shape before this evil doer came along, culturally. He has now poisoned the culture to the extent that the body is paralyzed. And now he's going through a revisionist, a phase of revisionist history about himself that would be laughable were it not pathetic and dangerous. Along the lines of every other mad, insane, psychotic dictator that's ever existed, this creature in the White House told an audience that one of his core principles is to never divide people. Now, why would the most divisive president in American history be spending his every day now trying to revise people's knowledge of what he is. They're looking right at him. They know what evil is. They can see it. It comes out of his mouth every time he opens it, turning people against each other, black against white, gay against straight. Wherever you turn, that's the man's entire lifestyle built upon what he learned as a radical street agitator from the Alinsky method. You can look at the story yourself on the Gateway Pundit, which I linked up on michaelsavage.com, or I want you to listen now to the president, and I want you to listen to him lying as he catches himself reading his own lie. You can hear he's stunned by what someone wrote for him. Listen in four. One of my core principles is that uh, uh, I will never engage in a politics in which I'm trying to divide people or make them... Did you hear? I Less stopped him. Than me. Did you hear him pause on that? He knows it's such a lie. He knows it's the opposite of who he is. He knows that his entire MO is divisiveness. So we got one of his six sorority girls, one of the drug addicts who work for him, to write this filth. And this guy stumbles on his own lie because he can't believe what they wrote for him. One of these sick girls who work for him. Listen carefully and tell me if you didn't hear what I just heard. I'm an expert. There's nobody better than me. Nobody has better ears than me in the history of the media ever. I just heard this man stumble on his own lie. He could not believe that he, they gave this to him to read. Listen to this. One of my core principles is that uh, I will never engage in a politics in which I'm trying to divide people or make them less than me because they look different or have a different uh, religion. That's a core principle. I, that's not something I would violate. Now, why would he have to say a thing like this when he knows it's a lie? The girls who work for him know he's in trouble. The girls who work for him know that he's the most divisive president in history and everybody knows the king has no clothes. So let me pause right there and I'm going to tell you where I'm going with today's show. How do you cope with the liberal meltdown of all of our values? I know some extremely successful people who began with nothing. They began with nothing, zero inheritance, no white privilege, and through brains and guts, they made themselves into extremely wealthy, successful individuals. And these few people that I know who have built their lives like this are now sick to their stomachs as they see this divisive weasel in the White House and what he is doing to America, burning down the city of Baltimore. Half the city was burnt to the ground because of the vile filth that came out of his mouth against white police. The police will not work in Baltimore right now. And the very same uh, uh, ghetto dwellers who hated the police are now saying the police are not there for them. That's what's going on in America. Wherever you turn, you see a country that's having a heart attack because of this man. Now he has the nerve to say one of my core principles is to never divide people. So, so let me go back to that issue. How do you cope with it? I see people who say to me, he's infecting the country in every way he can with an incurable disease. Why are they bringing Syrian refugees to all white communities in Idaho, for example? Why would they do this? It's like bringing a cancer to a Christian community. 
Did you hear what I said? Send it to Media Matters. Send it to George Soros personally. I'll say it again. Why would the evil devils in the State Department take Syrian refugees, not Christian refugees, mind you, but Muslim Syrian refugees who have not been vetted, some of them could be al-Qaeda or al-Nusra, and bring them to an all-white Christian cohesive community in North Dakota or wherever they're bringing them, other than to fracture that community, why would they inject the equivalent of a virus into such a community? Because they will not stop until the country is totally broken in every corner of the land. Now you say, well, wait a minute. I, I know you're right, Michael, but what can I do about it? I feel paralyzed. You know that the Republicans were elected to stop this. You know that that liar, that gullet liar, that liar gullet from Kentucky, that liar, worse than a lame horse, McConnell, and that stew bum drunk, Boehner. You know that they were given the power to stop this maniac. And what did they do? What did these men do? They're more evil than the Democrats. The Republican Party today is more evil than the Democrat Party for one simple reason. The Democrat socialist Islamist bloc in the Democrat Party is clear in their agenda. The Republican Party was supposed to stop this agenda. That's why we went to the polls in November. Instead of stopping the evildoers, they have enabled the evildoers. So people say to me, Michael, I can't go on. I can't look at this every day. I get sick. And they ask me what I do. I said, I've been doing it for 21 years. I haven't died yet. So they asked me, how can we live with this? What do we do when we see a country that is dying? When you, wherever you look, we know the news media what it is. There is no news media. They're just paid stooges. We know guys like Bill Maher, Stephen Colbert, John Stewart have always been government jesters. They either give money directly for the favoritism that they get back, in my estimation, in order to be rewarded by being patted on the head by Obama. Every once in a while they get to go there and have their head patted by Obama, these little boys, and they pretend that they're big, wild, crazy guys as they sip vodka in the Chateau Marmont. But these government jesters are actually the pure evil of our society as well. They're the jesters they're of the type that were used in the concentration camp to bring people into the ovens thinking that they were being entertained. How do you cope with all of this? You don't know where to turn for relief, do you? And I have some answers for you of how to cope with the liberal meltdown of all of our values. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Does your opinion... So what we're going through in America is something unique to America. It's not unique to the world. Other countries have died. It's just that we're dying and many of us feel it. Where everything is upside down and backwards. White privilege, of course, is an invention of the Marxist left to take some of the most creative, productive people in the society and make them ashamed of their productivity. And to take people who are, let us say, not quite as productive and make them feel that they're victims. So if they want to punch a teacher in the face, run through a hall, knock someone off a chair, that's fine. It's just their cultural prerogative. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. So I went back in time to 2002 to my first published commercial book called The Savage Nation. And I found something that's worth looking at because I was being somewhat, I wouldn't say sarcastic, I was saying, I was saying being a little sarcastic. And I said, imagine a future if Al Gore wins the presidency. And I wrote this in 2002. And I said, this is what we might anticipate with Al Gore or another liberal in the White House. One, homosexuals in the military and homosexual marriage. Really, Michael? No kidding. Two, affirmative action, which they will call the Fairness for Dummies Act. Three, Reparations for non-slaves by non-slaveholders. Four, hate crime laws aimed at straight white males. Five, racial profiling laws aimed at straight white police. Six, a United Nations tax or a world tax. Seven, here's a beauty, 
free prescription drugs, not only for the elderly, but also for AIDS patients. No kidding. How did I know that? Eight, delegitimizing the Boy Scouts, or call it the Fairness to Predators Act. How did I figure that out? Nine, outlawing homeschooling or the Freedom from Learning Act. Ten, arrest, ban, or rewrite the authentic Bible as a hate book. Not quite there yet, Al. Eleven, mandatory application of Ritalin to any child with spunk or the Security for Children Act. Twelve, here's a beauty for those of you who love America. I predicted this in 2002, if a liberal had won the presidency. The com- the complete elimination of borders with Mexico or the Fairness to Latinos Act. 13. Partial birth abortion or infanticide and the sale of baby body parts or the Senior Citizen Life Extension Act. 14. Here's one for Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg and Geffen on his 400 foot yacht. Increased license for Hollywood's violence and pornography or the Freedom of Arts Act. 15. Socialized medicine and a national health plan or the Freedom from Bad Behavior Act. 16, the No Limits on Lawsuits Act. That's to reward the vermin with law degrees who live off false lawsuits. 17, we're almost at 17. Mandatory suicide for six seniors, or the Saving Social Security Act. 18, the Fairness in Talk Radio Act, or quote, the end of talk radio. 19, the end of the Electoral College and the Congressional Redistricting of America to ensure that never again will the demon cats be threatened or the, quote, one dunce, one vote act. 20, the complete seizing of all guns or the freedom from the Second Amendment Act. 21, the abolition of our existing Constitution, which they will call the Freedom from Freedom Act. I'm not Jonathan Swift. I'm Michael Savage. I wrote that in 2002. Anyone who gets on the show today gets a free Father's Day gift, Countdown to Mecca. I'm still fighting back, and so can you. I'm warning you, if every one of you fought back, whether it be a a word in a supermarket, a word on the golf course to the dummies with shorts next to you, you could change the course of human history. Don't give in to Obama and the radical left. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. See, this is the thing. This is the hard part for all of us who love music and love film. We watch it, we enjoy it, but we don't understand what it's doing to us. We don't understand how how intelligent the devil can be. We don't understand that this has caused the cultural meltdown of the West. We don't understand that the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and on a minor scale, for example, the government jesters that I mention over and over again, they're, they're sort of afterthoughts. They have melted the country down. They make it okay for a liar like Obama to get away with division and poisoning America. Poisoning America in a way that the body politic will never survive. Never. So I want to go back to the bigger picture, the positive picture, which is how do you cope with the liberal meltdown of our nation? Because melting down it is. I mean, make no mistake about it. We elected these vermin called Republicans. They're worse than Democrats. Not all of them. I told you. Senator Cotton, I'd vote for him. I'd work for him. Look what they did to him. Look what they did to the real military veterans who we elected. They put them at the back of the bus. That's what the Republican establishment really is. Pure, unadulterated, greedy, evil. So how do you cope with it? You don't know what to do. We're between elections. People have turned turned out of politics, tuned out of politics. They don't care right now. People don't understand what I mean. They're not listening to talk radio for political views. They're not really listening for political information. What, Hillary Clinton, that old hag, you care about what she says or doesn't say? She's going to say something new? Is there anything new under the sun that you haven't heard uttered from her? What could she say that you haven't heard already? She's evil incarnate. What more do you need to know? (coughs) So who cares about 20 scene right now? Then you've got the rotating clown show on the Republican side. Some good men, yeah, but... They're neutralizing each other. It's sad to watch, but that's what's happening. Notice that the Democrats aren't neutralizing each other. Other than this this clown from the Lower East Side of New York, the deli man, Bernie Sanders. The deli operator. All he needs is a dirty, bloody apron with his accent and his delivery. She so goes to Rubes in North Dakota and tells him that he wants fairness, and they applaud him. 300 people, and right in the New York Times cover, huge crowds, 300 people. 
If I had 5,000 people, which I did many times, they may believe it didn't exist. C-SPAN wouldn't cover any of my compassionate conservative events. Well, guess what? I'm here and they're there. Where's Brian Lamb now that you don't need him? I out-survived all of them. And let me tell you something else. If you're listening to me today, not for the first time, you can hear something different in my voice, can't you? I've been sick as a dog. I've been sicker than a dog for about 10 days now. And I've been struggling with this EDV-68 virus, which I got from Obama's children, which has now mutated all over the country. Make no mistake about it. I know where this epidemic came from. I don't need one of those stooge clowns from the CDC to tell me why I got so sick. I haven't had the flu in 25 years. It's from those polluted immigrants he brought in last summer. Damn it, I'm sick of this country. I'm sick of the liars with their medical degrees. That lousy liar in the CDC, Thomas Friedan. If we had a sane nation, he'd be held up for war crimes charges for letting this go on, immigrants and epidemics. Or that other character there from the NIH, another genius. So I think I've come through most of it. It's been quite a struggle. And I've come back stronger than I was before I was sick. I'm not out of the woods yet. I know it because I had a relapse last night. Then I found something new, which you're never going to believe. I was using Brazilian honey unfiltered, uncooked Brazilian honey. And I swear to God, it had, a, it had a weird taste. I know I shouldn't launch into a health thing right now, but I, I'm an eclectic man when it comes to various things, including health. In addition to using all of the uh, herbal and homeopathic and vitamin and mineral uh, knowledge that I've had, I will use anything that works, anything. And so I figured I'm getting a little better, but the throat still comes back and kicks me in the guts. And I had this unfiltered, uncooked Brazilian honey that someone bought me and had an odd taste. I thought it was, it was something wrong with it. And I realized that it may have some of the bee, bee toxins in it. I don't know what's in that honey, but it doesn't taste like any other honey I've ever had. And strangely enough, it had a really salubrious effect upon me. And it's given me a real kick in the pants. Nevertheless, I want to come back to this issue of fighting back. We are the majority. Those of you who listen to this show religiously, and I emphasize the word religiously, we are the majority of this nation. And I am telling you, you can change the course of human events, whether it be sitting in a restaurant and talking about the liar in the White House and what the left is doing to America and how he's selling us down the river, about talking about bringing in unscreened Muslims from Syria. Don't be afraid to say it. What is someone to do? Look at you wrong? Let him look at you wrong. They don't know what the hell they're talking about anyway, most people. They're idiots. If you could repeat the reality of what this devil is doing to us over and over again, I am telling you we can change the course of human events. We cannot let this evil man in the White House get away with this anymore. When he is now revising what he is doing with lies such as one of my core principles is to never divide people, when he is the most divisive, evil man in the history of the presidency, everyone with a brain knows that. His entire modus operandi has been divide and conquer. He learned it in the Sololinsky School of Community uh, Organization. You create dissension. You stir up hatred between the races. You stir up hatred between the classes. And then you use them to get what you want. This is how this character got where he is. He identifies with the poor blacks in Baltimore. What's even more pathetic about that, in addition to targeting white policemen unfairly and bringing down a, a decimation of law and order across America, intimidating the police like that, what's even more ironic about all of this is that, and I know this is a very sensitive issue. I have to, tre I have to thread this needle very carefully. Here is a show and career killer if I say it wrong. Barack Obama's father was African-African. He was from Kenya. He never suffered from the stings, even generations later, of slavery. Never. So where does this con man shyster get the nerve to make believe that he has suffered from white privilege, he has suffered from the stings of slavery? Where did he get that from? It's not even in this gene pool. Africans come here, they don't even talk about it because they know it's the freest country on earth. They come here usually with very good educations and they go very far in this country. Where does this character get this from? Where? Look how far he's gotten with the act. Why should he change now? Do you know anyone who changes their act when they've been this successful? No, mail. never. You don't know anyone who changes it. So it's pretty amazing. So what do you do? So someone says to me this morning, he's depressed. 
He's sad. He worked his whole life from nothing. He's got everything, and he sees the death of America. He looks ahead of him. He's had a vision to create a great business. And he says, I can look ahead. I can see what's coming. He's injecting like a virus Muslims from Syria into all white communities in America. Last summer, he took infected children from Honduras and put them in every school district that he could in America where the poor lived. Why did he do that? Well, he brought tuberculosis to Lynn, Massachusetts. Check it out. It's a fact. You can still find it. He has brought diseased children in from Central America, and in so doing, he disseminated illness, a new viral illness that was polio-like, leaving many children paralyzed. You don't know that either because the rats in the public health business have buried that. It's all factually true. Why is he doing this? Is it by accident? Is it because he's a do-gooder and he wants to help the poor? Is it because he wants to help Muslims and he feels bad for them? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's Section 8 housing on a national level. You know what Section 8 is, don't you? That started a long time ago under your good friend Bill Clinton, the con man. The con man was so smart that he distracted us by talking about the poor and the downtrodden while raking it all in. Raking it in by the hundreds of millions of dollars, him and the old lady. And what was he doing with Section 8 housing? How did that work? Work under Donna Shalala, one of the most evil women in the history of America, who has ruined one university after another like a, like a scourge. And now she's being rewarded with the payoff. She's going to run the Clinton Foundation. Now, Donna Shalala pushed the uh, Section 8 housing uh, issue farther than anyone before her. What is Section 8? You take an all-white middle-class community somewhere in suburban America, and in this all-white suburban community, you inject low-income troublemakers with free housing, and then you let the games begin. That's Section 8 housing. It's all under the guise of doing good. Now, of course, along the way, they made tens of millions of dollars for their friends who built the, their housing, traded in the land. You know that. That's, you got to remember this. Do-gooders uh, also do very well indeed. But I haven't answered the question of how do you cope with this? How do you cope with it? So my advice was, listen to me. I said, I woke up this morning. There's been three weeks of darkness here in the San Francisco area. Horrible gray skies and windy. It was disgusting. We had the, the early June gloom that we get. It was a horrible place to live. Because the only thing the Bay Area has is weather. And when the weather goes, there's nothing here. It's a societal meltdown. There is absolutely no society here. It's a, cult it's a cultural ground zero. So when the weather goes, there's nothing left here. Well, anyway, the weather came back. I woke up. I went out after being so sick for so long. And I, looked as, I felt as though I was on the deck of a cruise ship in the Bahamas. A warm tropical air had come up off the bay. The sun was shimmering off the waves, and I sat out there for a few minutes with my dog, and I, I meditated. I let everything go from the past and the future. There was no past. There was no future. There was only the present moment. I was able to draw it all into me, and I'm saying to you that there are methods that people have used from the beginning of time who have lived through much worse than we're living through under this monster in the White House to get through it, and you have to learn how to do it or you'll have a nervous breakdown. You've got to learn to inhale the eternal, nature, dogs, birds, clouds. You've got to learn that nature is eternally there for us and we can still enjoy it. Obama has not found a way yet to poison nature. He has not found a way to tax the waves. He's not yet found a way to tax every, every piece of, of sunlight. Him and his wife have not yet figured out how to put a tax on sunlight or a tax on clean air. But believe me, there's a few months left to go in this year and another whole big year to bring it all down, girl. So one of the methods that I use, that you should use, is nature. As I say to you, nature is the eternal neutralizer from all, for all problems. You say, well, yeah, but isn't that turning away from the problem? Aren't you failing America? Screw America at that point. You have to survive. You are America. You have to learn to turn it all off. You have to learn how to take in the positive that these evil men and women in government uh, have, done, what they're doing to this country is something beyond comprehension. Any other time they would have been arrested for this. Do you know that everything that the men fought for in World War II, 
against this dictatorship that we have, this minor dictatorship, this mini dictatorship and this this rule of no law, this just rule of me, meaning Obama, is the antithesis of the United States of America. Do you know attacking the police like this has brought about a decline in law and order in America? Do you understand what he's doing? Do you think it's by accident? This is his modus operandi. Look how far he's gotten. From an unknown fifth-rate student in the middle of Hawaii, look where he's gone. And look how he's held on to power because of the genius of the media around him. And take a guess who they now want to foist on us. The very same evil monsters in Hollywood who did this to us, and I'll name them in a few seconds, they're doing it again. They're holding another fundraiser now for the Hildebeest. That would be David Geffen, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Steven Spielberg. When I jokingly say Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg, do you think I'm doing it for fun? There are really evil men in the world who hate the country. There are really evil men in the world who manipulate imagery and poison the mind not only of Americans but of the whole world. There are really evil geniuses in Hollywood. They gave us Obama. They found him long before anyone else did, raised money for him, and foisted him upon us. They're now going to do it with the Hildebeest. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Breaking news on the Savage Nation. Get ready. If you think it was bad, it just got worse. The California Senate, which is a single party system, like in communist China, the California Senate just approved health care benefits for illegal immigrants. Let me repeat that, all of you good liberals. The state Senate in the state of California, a dictatorship, approved a hotly debated measure that would allow illegal immigrants in the nation, in the, in the uh, sorry, in California, to sign up for special health care programs that will offer the same benefits as Medi-Cal. This is what happens when you have a dictatorship of a Democrat socialist regime. This is your tax dollars. These are your tax dollars at work. This is what Jerry Brown has wrought. This is all of you smiling liberals. You'll soon pay for this with your own health. Now, I warned you about that in the beginning, 1994. I told you what was coming. I tried my best. I mean, I admit I failed. How many talk shows will admit to you that they failed? None. They act as though they're going to change the course of events by complaining about these things. I apologize to you. I've been preaching since 1994 about these things. I warned you what the radical left was doing, whether it been the animal rights groups like PETA, taking your eyes off the real the real human rights tragedies with absurd non-issues such as eating a McChicken sandwich, these clucking capons and PETA and their psychopathic covens, cousins in the Claven, who dominated the public consciousness for so many years, want you to pay attention to the drivel of animal rights while the real tortures of humans being conducted by Muslims in the Middle East and elsewhere not to mention the torture in Cuba and North uh, Korea or in Africa. But whatever happened to Michelle Obama's uh, hashtag save the girls? Did she give that one up in between the, uh, the sandwiches? I, I thought she was going to save those girls who were stolen by the Muslims in Boko Haram. Guess that was a hot moment. But I warned you what would happen. I said, quote, page 21, they will open this country up to further terrorism. They will pollute everything that you believe in. They will trample on your church. They will trample on your flag. They will trample on your memory. They'll trample on your collective memory. They'll pervert your child's mind. 2002, remember who the father of all of this is? Me, Michael Savage. How can I save you from the liberal assault on our borders, language, and culture when the only thing to save us would be an immediate impeachment action against the most... Well, you've got the picture. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. 
The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. So the czars of Hollywood who have destroyed America, first with the vile pornography that they put out under the guise of art, and then by manipulating our elections, are now at it again, raising money for Hillary Clinton to continue their uh, life choke hold on the nation. Geffen, Katzenberg, that's Jeffrey. People say they call him Jeffrey. Uh, I don't think there's an actual Ratzenberg, but I know there's a Spielberg and a few others control the United States of America and the world through the images that they create. <clears throat> Make no mistake about it. The images that are created in the pollution factories of Hollywood, USA, go out to the world. And so after they have paralyzed and destroyed the American mind and soul and heart, they're now trying to do it in the world. So what happens is, and I, I said this for 20 years now, we know that we are in a cultural war with Islam. Some call it a religious war. It could be called a religious political war or a cultural war. It's somewhat of a cultural war between the vile filth of the West and the ninth century uh, primitive view of the radical Muslims. So it's Katzenberg and Geffen and the others against, against <clears throat> the radical Muslim view. And right now, after Katzenberg and company have destroyed the American soul and mind, they're uh, now in a conflict with radical Islam. And so in the Middle East, they don't want their filthy movies. They come to this country, and whether or not they want Sharia law, whether or not they hate America is irrelevant. What's relevant is they don't want the filth and the violence that's created by the Hollywood filth factories in their home. No, they don't want their daughter to sleep with a girl. No, they don't want their Muslim son to be gay married to a man. No, they don't want it. In fact, they'd rather kill them than let that happen. But you don't hear about that in the daily news. They like you to believe that uh, they're, they're as tolerant as you are, that their defenses have been destroyed just as yours have been, but they, they really haven't. So they're at it again. And I realize that many of you don't understand what I'm saying or you find this so offensive that you've turned the show off. Well, I can't help that. It's too late in American history for me to mince words. So mince words, I will not. And so we're talking about this. Now, in the middle of all of this, we have the most divisive left-wing fanatic in the history of government. It's hard to imagine a more radical person becoming president than this guy. If you have would have selected the head of the Ku Klux Klan to run on the Republican ticket and say he would win, I would say you're insane. Rightly so, who would want him to win? Nobody. You have the equivalent of the Ku Klux Klan running America on the left wing side. I stick by those words. In other words, you have equally radical left and right, don't you? But you have a hater in the White House that's so powerful and so devious in his ability to get his message across that he can do virtually anything he wants without opposition. So today we wake up and it gets even worse. Apparently it's seeping back to the girls who run his campaigns and his image rather, that America's finally on to him. They see that he's a king without clothes. He's the amazing transparent president. He asked, he said he'd have the most transparent administration in history, which is the opposite of what he has. It's a spy network like the Stasi in Eastern Europe. Uh, that, thank God, was stop, st uh, sorry, stopped by Rand Paul, just for a little while anyway. And now he gets up, and the girls who run his image say, look, they're on to the fact that you're a lying, devious divider. We have to cover that up. So they give him a speech to read. You've got to listen to this again. In all of the listening I've ever done to, to politicians, this clip that I'm about to play for you will demonstrate without a doubt that he himself choked on the lie that he was reading. Listen to clip four. He was stunned by what they wrote for him. One Listen. of my core principles is core. that core. Uh, I will never engage in a politics in which a politics. I'm trying to divide people or make them less than me because they okay, look different. Right. Or if you listen to this, if you were in a CIA language laboratory and I were your instructor, I would say we have a man here who is so embarrassed by what he's reading that he actually can't even, 
Notice what I'm going to play it again over and over again. We're going to do it like we're in a classroom in the CIA Language Institute. I want you to listen to him when he stumbles on the word divide, number one. And then when he emphasizes the core, core principles, they taught him that at Harvard, how to roll his R's, core. How he says core. That worked for him very well with the rubes of America. They think he was an educated, literate man. He will never engage in a politics. Listen carefully again and tell me if you actually think that he is not stunned at, at what the girls wrote for him. One of my core principles is that uh, I, I will never engage in a politics in which uh, pause. I'm trying pause. to divide people or he, make oh, them. He only said divide people. He didn't even want it. The word itself, it couldn't come out of his mouth. He learned division in the Alinsky School of Division of Divide and Conquer. Okay, we've covered that. Have we covered it? I don't think so. Now, he used the same day to uh, smear America as a racist nation using the Congressional Medal of Honor that he gave to a dead Jew from World War II and a, I think a dead black male from World War II. I think they're dead. In other words, he has to dredge up now the racism of World War II to smear the greatest generation. Listen to clip two from The Man Who Doesn't Divide. Now, America can't change what happened to Henry Johnson. We can't change what happened to too many soldiers like him who went uncelebrated because our nation judged them by the color of their skin. Ah, uh, get off it already. The content of their character. But we can do our best to make it right. Ah, uh, get off it already. Get off your high horse. You stink to high heaven. You stink to high heaven. No one believes a word you say, you liar, you. I feel like I'm in a fever listening to this. When is it going to end? When is this brainwashing going to end? When is the psychosis of this president going to be exposed for what it is? When? When will he be stopped? When? Here comes the next big lie. Again, the dictator says that under his presidency, the U.S. is the most respected nation in the world. I want you to listen to this and listen to this written by the sorority in five. You know, people don't remember, when I came into office, I remember. Uh, the United States, in world opinion, ranked below China mm -hmm. and just barely above Russia. Mm -hmm. And today, once again, the United States is the most respected country on Earth. Where? And part of that, I think, is and? because of the work that we did to uh, re-engage the world and say Are that crazy? we want to work with you as partners uh, with mutual interest and mutual respect. Okay, you know it's a complete fabrication. He almost started World War III with Russia, which, by the way, could still happen any moment because of his insanity and his, his uh, uh, inferiority complex and his jealousy of, uh, of Putin. Now, suddenly, it's the most popular nation on earth. I wish that was true. But on what, what basis is it the most respected country in the world? Where would that be? In North Korea? I, where, 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 where are we respected? Look, you get the picture. We can deconstruct this liar day and night. What good is it going to do? Then, you know, all of a sudden we have this guy, the deli man, Sanders, coming up out of nowhere. A Lower East Side, like uh, uh, a, re a, real, a real prize, Bernie Sanders. Well, time for the billionaires to pay their fair share of taxes. So let's have a laugh now and listen to the New York street communist Bernie Sanders in clip 12. At a time when we have massive Porn. income and wealth inequality, ah, we've got to up. ask the wealthiest people and largest corporations to start paying their fair share of taxes. It's oh, suck a that. salami. Leave uh, me right alone. Now, we are losing Go eat a bratwurst and show stuff a bratwurst in your yap. Because profitable corporations are stashing their profits. Uh, uh, in turn the this guy off. Turn this liar off. Where's he raising his money from? How did this cretin become governor of Vermont? What, I'm sorry, Senator from Vermont, this New York street agitator, Bernie Sanders, you hear? I mean, in my time, the most he could have done was run a slimy delicatessen on the Lower East Side that would have been closed down for health violations. He's the type of guy who would have sold, like, fetid hot dogs that he bought from a vendor somewhere in Brooklyn where they came in from China with dead cat feet in them. And then he would have talked about the evil poisons in food. So I, I suspect that uh, Geffen, Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg will not do fundraisers for, for Bernie Sanders. I suspect it would not be a fundraiser. Even they would be too embarrassed. They know that he's going nowhere fast. You know, maybe he could be an undertaker in Nebraska after this is all over. That's, uh, they could buy the con. Uh, let's see what else we have for you. The chaos. Teachers complain. Chaos reigns as St. Paul's schools spend millions on white privilege training. I told you that in the last hour. 
they're teaching that white privilege exists because the American educational system is built around white culture, tradition, and social norms, a.k.a. white privilege, to the unfair detriment of black students. So they're now trying to customize the school curricula to meet the cultural specifications of black children. So what they're doing is getting rid of the concept of using suspensions or expulsions to discipline black students because that's racism. This is what they've done. They brainwash people into, into literally throwing away common sense. I'm a former teacher. You know, when we had troublemakers, white or black, they put him, they gave him a, a choice. They threw him out of the classroom the minute they started to act up. They got in the school marshals. They ta- took him out by the collar. They threw him into detention, threw him out of school for a day. It was a privilege to go to school when I went to school. If the kid came back and acted up again, they put him into a special class for troublemakers. They didn't care what the race was. That's all. And if that didn't work, they put him into a reform school. If that didn't work, they went to prison. As a result, we had geniuses emerge from our public schools. Children who were so bright that they could rise to the highest possible level in, of, of achievement that they were capable of. They were not held back by the dummies and the troublemakers of any race. In other words, the dummies and the troublemakers always existed. We had a way of treating them in the old days, which was to isolate them, not glorify them. So why is this all happening now? Why? I mean, you can't figure out what happened to the country. You elected him. I didn't. He is the one who gave license to all of this madness. So let's move on to the other topic ideas for the savage nation. Let us see. Uh, Minnesota Muslims prefer Sharia law and would rather live in Muslim countries, but they're here. They like the green, Uncle Green. I don't understand why the Minnesota Muslims don't move to their homeland where they can be happy in Sharia law, like the Somalis. Why don't they go back to Somalia? If they want Sharia law and they don't like the white Christian culture, why don't they go back to Somalia where they had it so good? People are mutilating themselves in order to be deemed disabled. Hillary Clinton losing support of women. That's funny. Study shows people are consuming an average eight hours of media every day. I wonder how much I consume. I, I consume more than that. Only eight hours? That's low. I'm more like 18 hours of media. I'm rarely disconnected from a screen. From the minute I stumble out of bed in the morning, I, I mean, my whole life is a green room. I go from the bed, bleary-eyed. I let the dog out and go right to the computer to look at the news. Look at my emails. Check my website. Then I sit down and do show prep. Then I do the show for three hours. Then I usually take a nap. Then I get up and check the emails and check the, <laughs> the news. At night, I usually watch him. I saw a great movie last night, by the way. I'm a, you know, I got to tell you something. It was Forrest Whitaker, who I think is one of the greatest actors of our time. You know the guy with the droopy eye, the black guy? The droopy left eye. But it was an obscure Jim Jarmusch movie. If that's how you pronounce his name. Is it Jarmusch? Jarmusch? Jim Jarmusch? Jarmusch. Jarmusch. Uh, 1999. It's about a, 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 a black contract killer for the uh, Italian mafia. In a dis, like a you know, blown up like inner city. It was shot in Jersey City, but it looked like a like Cleveland. You know what I mean? When the industry left. So he lives with pigeons on a roof. And he practices the code of Bushido, the code of the samurai. Lives alone, has no friends. And occasionally they communicate with him through carrier pigeon to go out and commit his, his, uh, his assassinations. But he, he's a good assassin. That's the point. Like when he comes in to kill a mafia guy who's with a woman, he won't kill the girl, that kind of thing. You know, the, the mythology. So the, the movie is so well done. It was a slow, creepy movie. But I was compelled to watch it for two straight hours. I was almost embarrassed to be entrapped by this movie. But I watched it, and it took me out of myself for those 90 minutes or two hours. So again, I was in front of a screen for another t- two hours before, <laughs> before the curtain fell. So I think, people are in front of screens for eight hours a day. What else is there? What else is there? I mean, what else is there in the world other than, than screens? Why would, you want to go into the re- Why would you want to go into the fake world of reality when you live in the real world of unreality? I mean, what's wrong with you? Why would you want to go into the fake world of reality? The uncomfortable, impossible fake world of reality when unreality awaits us at every turn. I'll be right back. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, from now to the end of the show, I'm going to give out free copies for Father's Day of Countdown to Mecca. If you get on the show, if you pass the call screener, you get a copy of Countdown to Mecca. It's that simple. I want to give them out right to Father's Day, then you won't hear any more about the book. It's that simple. It's a great book, good read. You'll enjoy it. Your father will love it. Your husband will love it. Your son will love it. Your grandfather will love it. Your grandson will love it when he grows up and can read. <laughs> Everyone in the San Francisco area will love it because nobody has described the Bay Area better than Michael Savage. Ever. Ever. No one's ever done a better description of the Bay, North Beach, Chinatown, cafe scenes than me. Ever. That's how, it's, that's how good it is. Countdown to Mecca. Let's take a few calls on the Savage Nation. Chris on KSFO. Welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hey, thank you, Michael. I'm going to ask you for about 60 seconds to make a cogent point, and that is I have a strategy going forward. Um, under the pen is mightier than the sword. Your average Joe reads at about an eighth grade level these days. You and I are readers. People don't l usually read. Literally, they have the attention span of slightly less than a goldfish. We're at a pivotal point in terms of demographics in that millennials have just overtaken the boomers in terms of uh, percentage in the workforce. And these are people that don't really get most of their information off of uh, mass media. The left has been vastly superior to the center and right at crafting a mass. I understand they get, their information in, in, they get their information sort of in hieroglyphics from Twitter feeds, from Yahoo, a little blast that tells them that Everyone is homophobic and racist and anti-Muslim. Stay on the line. We'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, you are going to get a copy of Countdown to Mecca because I, I know you can still read. Apparently, you can still read a book. Millennials cannot read books. They grew up on Adderall and Ritalin. They're incapable of reading a book. But we can. And I, some of us can even write them. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Well, America's a giant lollipop for the third world. California in particular is a giant lollipop for Mexicans who come here to suck off the system for free. And today there are minions uh, in the uh, state senate, state senator Ricardo Lara, Democrat Bell Gardens in the Socialist Communist Party, called the Democrat Party of California, just said we're going to give free health care for the estimated 2 million people in the state illegally. He said we're talking about our friends, we're talking about our neighbors and our families who are denied basic health care in the richest state of this union, Lara told his colleagues. The bill would allow 240,000 minors, illegal aliens, to sign up for Medi-Cal and allow low-income adults, meaning Hispanics from Mexico and non-citizens, to get the same services. It's great. It's really nice. It's good to see what a tolerant liberal nation is. Lara said many often forego medical care because of the fear of medical debt. Well, no kidding. So I have to carry their debt now? No kidding, schmuck. I have medical debt too when I was poor. I had to pay for my own medical care, you, you idiot, you. Senator Jeff Stone, Republican Murrieta, that's a laughing stock said the free medical care for illegals only makes worse a shortage of physicians to treat patients on Medi-Cal. This bill would only add hundreds of thousands of patients to the rolls with no one to care for them. So that, that's good. It just shows you that the tolerance of America has no limits and uh, fairness has no limits. And a sick man like uh, this, as well as the other creatures that uh, seized power, absolute power, after Willie Brown passed it to them with a baton, are now granting uh, amnesty in the form of health coverage for illegal aliens. Who's going to pay for it? Katzenberg? Geffen? Is Geffen going to take, let's say, 10 millions out of, out of it? Let's say Geffen says, I'll tell you what, I want illegals to have health care because I'm such a good liberal. And since my yacht's only 314 feet, instead of building a 425-foot yacht next year to compete with Larry Ellison, I will forego the extra 100 foot of boat, and I'm going to donate $100 million to health care for illegal aliens. Moreover, to show what a liberal man I am, Jeff and I are going to bring illegal aliens on our yachts 
in the Mediterranean and the Caribbean from now on. Not, not as workers, of course, or to clean the toilets, but to be equals with us because we don't want to be the zero, 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 one percent. We're going to actually sit down to dinner with the illegal aliens on our yachts. We're going to show them how fair we are because we're very fair men. Geffen, Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg. California Senate approves health coverage for some immigrants here illegally. Sign up for special health care. This is going to be fun when the liberals go for their Medi-Cal benefits and find out that they were cut back. All of the pompous cafe liberals of uh, the Bay Area, Mill Valley, and the others who read the, the San Francisco Chronicle as though it's the, uh, the Holy Grail. They, they take their finger. You can see them sitting there. They get the paper for free in the garbage can, all crumpled up with coffee on it, usually in a Starbucks because they won't even buy the paper. And then they try to complain about the coffee being too hot, and then they get another cup for free, whatever. They'll sit and read the garbage can newspaper, the Chronicle, and they, you could see the finger going down the retirees, mainly retired professors. They read it line by line as, as if it's the Bible. What's going to happen when these old hippies find out that their Medi-Cal benefits have just gotten cut because of their liberalism? Who will they blame? Well, they'll blame the rich. It's time for the billionaires to pay their fair share of taxes. They'll blame the rich. Get rid of Proposition 13. Raise the taxes on the rich. Anyway. Oh, chaos of a rich. Uh, Chris, you've been holding. You're back on the air. Go ahead. So you say libs are creating b better messages. They, the millennials are morons who can't read. They have a detention span of about eight seconds. They get all their messages from Yahoo and Twitter. What else is new? Yes. Actually, I lied to you, Michael. I'm not with KSFO. I was in Mill Valley after being in the Bay Area for 30 years. I moved to Nevada to get away from the stupidity. And after a while, there won't be a place for me to hide. But let me get to my message. No, there is no place to hide because Obama's bringing in as many Muslim refugees. It's almost like by design. The computer is showing them with his large enclaves of white Christians, and he's putting Syrian Muslim refugees into those areas along with African Muslim refugees in the other areas. Now, what is he doing that for? Well, let's, let's, let's get this straight. Right up front, you and I are both racist because we don't agree with his principles. I'm not a racist. No, speak for yourself. Don't include me in your own, in your own uh, buying into the system. Sarcastic, Michael. I'm not a well, I don't accept sarcasm. That's, that's false. All right, so let me get to my message quickly. The left is way superior to the center and the right at crafting a message that sticks. <laughs> let's talk about some of them. Bush lied, people died. Romney hasn't paid taxes in several years. That was democratic dementia. That was that he knew it was a lie and shamelessly said it. Uh, Republicans like dirty air, water, hate women, love white privilege. All right, thanks for the call. Uh, who is this guy? I, you know, it was a long speech with a, a bad uh, glottal stop, and he quotes my book, Liberalism is Mental Disorder, and assigns it to Gravel Gertie. Did you catch that on the tape? Yeah, I'm not going to promote some hag's book who copied everything I ever did, and she still thinks she's cool, you know, 40 years after the point, still wearing short skirts with the arched eyebrow. I mean, that day is over. She ought to dress up and, and act a little bit more, a little more dignity. Maybe she could sell the message better instead of dressing up like a vamp. I mean, after a certain age, you, you cut the vamp act out. You start to look like Bruce Jenner after a certain point. Uh, yeah, so where was So... <laughs> Anyway, look, so you know what I did during the break? During the break of the hour, you won't believe this. In addition to boiling soup over on my radio stove, I reheated some, some soup. I forgot it was on. I burnt the whole stove in the pot. It was delicious. It was from a Vietnamese restaurant nearby from two days ago. And as that boiled over, my assistant pulled up. All in five minutes, what you can do is amazing. Fed the dog, let the dog out, boiled the soup over, burnt my palate. Uh, my assistant... I told you I'm a plant collector. I had been years ago. And my collections are in seven herbaria around the world. This is my legacy. Forget radio. Radio is one part of it. My small step for humanity consists of my plant collections. They're in the Bishop Museum in uh, Honolulu. They're in the, the Kew Gardens in, in London. I know that I sent a set to a herbarium in Germany. I believe one was sent to Russia. At the time, we used to collect seven samples of all of our plants and send them to seven herbaria around the world. Now, you don't know if you're not in botany what I'm talking about. This is my small step for humanity by rescuing the folklore of these, of these islanders that live forever in the museums. So let, let me just finish the story. It's important to me. Uh, just indulge me. 
So as you know, I'm trying to collect all of my archives and I'm trying to do a book and I'm trying to do this and trying to do that. Well, I am actually going to be doing a book on my early journals from 1969 to, no, 63 to 69, World Net Daily, I think, and I are going to do it. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention it. Maybe I killed the deal. Who knows? But it's going to be my journals with my pictures and my drawings and my musings and the evolution of Michael Savage in the early days with some pictures of me that you're not going to believe it's me. You just won't believe it. Nevertheless, in addition to all of that, I'm collecting all my photographs. One thing I couldn't find was my herbarium. I had had my own set of these seven sets of plants of my medicinal plant collection, which consists of about 200 or 250 specimens from some of the most remote islands on the, war on the planet. And they live in a thing called a herbarium case. And they could live for hundreds of years. If I go into a herbarium, for example, and I want to look up a plant that was collected in 1650, I can find a plant that was collected in 1650, and I can see little notes written by the plant collector on the, on the herbarium specimen. It's pretty exciting for those of you in science who are into that. I, I know this is so obscure. It makes no sense at all. So I have one set of these plants, and I lost them. I knew I had put them away in storage. For five years, I've been trying to find which storage bin they were in. Now, needless to say, I wouldn't go in any of the storage bins because they're rat infested. It's horrible. You know what storage bins are like years later when you forget? Anyway, it was found today, finally. They broke the lock, went in there with masks on and whatnot, and <clears throat> they pulled it out. There was not one bug in the case because it had been sealed inside a carton inside of it. And I had put uh, uh, moth flakes in there when I put it away five years ago or six years ago. My assistant pulls up to my house and I say, in addition to letting the dog out, feeding the dog, feeding myself, burning the pot, I ran out from the, <laughs> the radio studio and I said, open the thing. I said, there it was. It was as clean as a whistle and all my plants are in there. And so I'm very happy to say to you that I finally found my plant collection. You say, well, so what? Get on to bashing liberals, will you? I'm not interested. Well, I guess this is an example of the kind of white privilege I live in. You know, all those years of collecting plants for no money. All those years of doing something for science for no money. All those years of dreaming of helping humanity for no money. Uh, all those years of dreaming and dreaming and dreaming that one day this would have some value. It sort of completed the circle for me. I realize it's not as great an invention as some. I recognize that. And there's no technology that's directly related to uh, botanical specimens. Now there isn't, but there may be one day. But nevertheless, in my little way, I made one small step for humanity. So help me burnish my halo <laughs> on the savage nation. It's just a good moment for me. That's all. After being sick for 10 days, it was like a little reward that I got from fate. You know what I'm saying? It came back to, to give me something nice. And I can't wait after the show to go up there and go through the, sp the specimens and actually hold them in my hand again because I can remember every day that I collected these in the rain, in the sun. And the deprivation I put myself through to, to do so, I would never do it again, never, never. Funding my own research because nobody would fund it, forget about it, I wouldn't do it. Okay, my friends, 855-400-7282. What a great day this is. Uh, where do I want to go right now? I think the best place to go is um, some nice callers and free copies for Father's Day of Countdown to Mecca. And that's for your father, your son, your brother of the Holy Ghost. Where are we now? WFTL. Stephen, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Stephen? Hi, Michael. Oh, yeah, the point I want to make is uh, I'm in the entertainment business. I went to Columbia University, that lovely university of the Marxist. And uh, I'm I'm Wait, I'm sorry, I miss Steve. You're in what business? The entertainment business. Oh, I thought you said the henna business or the hemp business. No, I, I just part of the connection. But anyway, I'm. In I'm sorry. I'm Joe. Okay, so you're in the entertainment business. Sorry, please. You have the floor. Okay. So the bottom line is, is a, there is a conservative underground in Hollywood. I just want you to know that. Oh, I but, do know. They have a group called the Lincoln or something that they meet. We, we remain pretty quiet because bottom line is, that you remember the Hollywood 10 and how they were silent? For the, the I market. do know. I know what Geffen and company do to you. I get it. I understand what fascism is. Okay. Do you realize that if I were to speak up, except that maybe if I'm in the company of Clint Eastwood, but uh, these, most of these lunatics, okay, if I were to speak up and go into my politics, which are match yours almost identically, um, I would be blacklisted. Of course I know that. I know it because I have a few active friends who tell me exactly what they go through because they happen to love America and wear a flag on their jacket. 
Yeah. Do you also realize that this is the case in Silicon Valley? I didn't know that they're that psycho in Silicon Valley. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm let me tell you. I, 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 part of my uh, younger years, I grew up in Atherton, right next to uh, Palo Alto. Well, I know that the I know the phony. Uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the the underwear, the undershirt guy. I always forget his name. He make, makes me crazy. What, what the Facebook founder, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg was a sucker born every minute. Zuckerberg makes believe he's for illegal immigrants. He is, and he wants cheap labor. Yeah, but he's also. I can't get off Facebook. It's a, it's, they won't get me, take me off because it's a, it's, I'm a conservative. This is a known fact. I have, I have other conservative friends. They, they tell you, oh, you accessed, uh, uh, got to the website through a, a device. Well, yeah, I travel a lot that we didn't recognize. And then they want me to prove my company. No, I know. I know that there's a Hollywood on the ground of people who love America, but it's ruled by the czars. And you know who they are. I've said it over and over again. Geffen is the top of the food chain. The next in line would be uh, uh, Katzenberg. Am I right? Yeah. It's, it's Geffen is number one because he has more money. Number two is Katzenberg because he has less money, but he's also a billionaire. The third in line would be Spielberg. Probably has a little less money, but he's also in the, in the same category. And then there are the others. Like I would, I would say Weinstein is an up-and-comer. They control Hollywood. Am I correct? Well, Weinstein brothers, are you kidding me? Of course they do. Yes. Absolutely. So why do they all hate America? Why do they have such... Can you explain the vendetta they have against this country? Yeah, I want to work really hard. I create amazing programming, okay? The bottom line is, these are guys who made billions, okay? And now they want to rule over us. I'm not kidding you. They're, they're, they just want to rule over us, because, but they don't want us to make billions. But isn't their agenda primarily gay marriage? Isn't that the number one motivator for these guys? No, because uh, well, maybe with someone, I'm not going to name names, but I, I know names. But the yeah, so, do, so, do, so do I, by the way. Yes, go on. I know, I know you do. I know you. Look, you and I, we, I, know, I know you thoroughly. I listen to your show every day. Bottom line is that there is a segment in Hollywood that has the whole gay agenda pushing. I'm Roman Catholic, man. I mean, come on. The Pope a Roman Catholic in Hollywood? Are you allowed? Are you allowed over the border? Well, no. That, do, do you have to go through a checkpoint where you're inspected? I'll be right back. Stay on the line. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call eight hundred B U Y C O I N. We're talking about how ultra tolerance is going to kill us all on the Savage Nation. I wrote that in uh, two thousand and two. I wrote it in ninety four. And look, I love movies. Last night I said I stumbled on a movie on TV that no one would watch called Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai, 1999, with Forrest Whitaker, directed by Jim Jarmusch. I love the movie. It was slow, you know, out-of-town mafia type of guys. Unbelievably well done. But it's not for everybody. So we have on the line Stephen from FTL, who works in Hollywood, and he says there's a conservative underground, which I've known about. Stephen, I know about the conservative underground. So give us your last point on this. Okay, this is how bad it is, Michael. Because of the, all the obstacles, and I also have my first script from Columbia, my thesis stolen, even though I got two options, okay? Now I'm starting my own online TV network. Uh, I'll have my own show, which will be in accordance to your views. Uh, by the way, I'm also a nationalist, so I'm sick and tired of these, uh, everyone coming in, taking American jobs, and lowering our wages, okay? You talk about California, I don't even know how you can live in California. I lived... Uh, uh, yeah. It's very hard to live here. Gov Governor Brown will white drive out all of those with white privilege. And then he'll have everything he's always wanted, which is a, a, a nation of serfs to rule over who don't even know what he's doing. Okay. Anyway, anyway, Stephen, we could talk for hours, and maybe we will. I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca. Mecca. Maybe you'll make it into a movie. You can give it away to your father for Father's Day. Stay in the line if you wish. I could start hour three with you. As usual, we have great callers. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. 
The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. All right, here we go again. We had breaking news in the last hour. The California Communist Senate approved illegal alien health care at the expense of everyone. Well, now we have new news for you. With the help uh, of their friends, with a little help from their friends in the uh, U.S. Congress, they approved a new spy bill. That's right. It was disapproved for about 12 minutes. And now the NSA phone records bill is back in the hands of the illegal, Ill, Ill, the, uh, the president, I almost said the illegal alien. Congress approved sweeping changes to surveillance laws enacted after 9-11 attacks, eliminating the National Security Agency's disputed bulk phone records collection. Wow, I could start talking on the phone again to my, to my relatives and friends. Isn't that it? Without thinking of some vermin from, from Bryn Mawr or from Harvard, some anti-male, anti-Christian, anti-rat sitting there listening in on me. Two days after Congress let the phone records and several other anti... I, I became like a figure in a mafia movie. I would always talk to people with a toothpick in my mouth, with a, with a hand over my mouth. I wouldn't talk on the phone anymore. I was meeting people in parking lots with a toothpick in my teeth so I couldn't be listened to. I'd be walking around talking to people. Everywhere I went, I was putting away iPhones, cell phones. I wouldn't talk on the phone. We would talk in code. And I, I had nothing to hide. They turned the country into a prison camp under your president. So let's see. The new thing, that Obama, who planned to sign it promptly. Let's see. The legislation will revive most of the programs the Senate had allowed to elapse. Blah, blah, blah. But the authorization will undergo major changes. Okay, what are the changes? What are the changes? The legislation passed with the support of Obama and House Speaker John the Drunk Boehner, Republican of uh, Nowhere Land, but over the strong opposition of Senate Majority Leader the Gobbler, Mitch the Gobbler McConnell. The Gobbler wanted to extend the old spy program unchanged. I guess he, he liked what he was listening to. I guess that's how the Gobbler holds on to power in Kentucky. That's how he keeps Rand Paul in place. This is a step in the wrong direction, said the Gobbler ahead of the Senate's final vote to approve the House version, dubbed the USA Freedom Act. Oh, come on! Everything is backwards. I told you that's how it works when you uh, have Alice in Wonderland. What do you mean USA Freedom Act? It's still listening in on us. Okay, what did they change? The legislation remakes the most controversial aspect of the USA Patriot Act. The one secret bulk collection that allows national security agents to sweep up Americans' phone records and comb through them for ties to international terrorists. Yeah, sure, that's what they were listening for. If you said Jesus three times in a row, they'd have, you'd get a knock in the middle of the night. Over six months, the NSA would lose the power to collect and store those records. But the government could still gain court approval to obtain data connected to specific numbers in the phone companies, which typically is known for 18 months. We become like Eastern Europe. The Stasi is everywhere. Only now, instead of like white male, evil German, uh, East German spies, they're basically uh, evil anti-American girls and boys from America's worst universities. The FBI's authority to gather business records in terrorism, espionage, blah, blah, blah. We're still living in a police state. Now, why would McConnell want more? Why would this idiot who just went along with Obama and everything else want more than even what Obama wants? Uh, who knows? Why does he want more? Because he was probably getting leaks when he wanted them. I'd rather talk about prostate difficulties than talk about the Congress, to be honest. Uh, House GOP moves to punish State Department over Benghazi. Yeah, right. Benghazi this, Benghazi that. Ben I'd rather talk about Ben Gay uh, arthritis cream than Benghazi at this point. That's all. What else is in the news? Let's see. We gave you all the news that you could not use. Obama, 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 I called him. I almost said Obama. I said Obama. Why did I say Obama. I, I, I combine two words, Obama, Obama. Obama vows to sign the USA Freedom Act. They're calling new spying a Freedom Act. This is unbelievable. It's right out of 1984. The new spying deal is now called free, the Freedom Act. It's astounding. Look, I got to go back to what I was reading you early in the, in the show. This is funny. This is really funny. Remember I read to you all of this stuff that I said would happen if a liberal like Al Gore won the presidency in my book in 2002? 
how they would reverse everything and morph it into what it isn't, and they would call it what it wasn't. Remember I read those things to you? I can't find it. I can't flip through the pages. I'm sick and tired of writing books. I've written too much. Too much stuff already. I, I've set the stage. It's enough already. What's this now? Oh, here it is. I said in, in 2002, if a, if a liberal like Al Gore won the presidency, his contract against America would include one, homosexuals in the military and homosexual marriage. Check that one off. Two, affirmative action or the, freedom, or the Fairness for Dummies Act. Three, uh, reparations for non-slaves by non-slaveholders. Four, hate crime laws aimed at straight white males. Racial profiling laws aimed at straight white police. A United Nations tax or a world tax. Free prescription drugs, not only for the elderly, but also for AIDS patients. That's, that's a big part of why Obamacare was passed, by the way, because of the AIDS lobby. You don't know that. And the pharmaceutical manufacturers. I said, eight, they would delegitimize the Boy Scouts and they would call it the Fairness to Predators Act. This is the same thing as calling the new spying act as a freedom act. Delegitimize the Boy Scouts and call it the Fairness to Predators Act. Outlawing homeschooling and call it the Freedom from Learning Act. Arrest, ban, or rewrite the authentic Bible as a hate book. Complete elimination of borders with Mexico and call it the Fairness to Latinos Act. Approve partial birth abortion or infanticide and the sale of baby body parts and call it the Senior Citizen Life Extension Act. Give Geffen, Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Spielberg increased license for their violence and pornography and call it the Freedom of Arts Act. Pass socialized medicine and a national health plan, call it the Freedom from Bad Behavior Act. Permit lawyers to sue everybody for everything at all times without any limitations, call it the No Limits on Lawsuits Act. Encourage mandatory suicide for six seniors and call it the Saving Social Security Act. Eliminate the Electoral College and call it the One Dunce, One Vote Act. Finally, completely seize all guns and call it the Freedom from the Second Amendment Act. And once that's done, abolish our existing Constitution and rewrite it and call it the Freedom from Freedom Act. Not bad. I did my best. I tried. 2002. There's other stuff I haven't gotten to yet that I want to get to on this. I'm feeling better after 10 days of being sick. God. You know when you come out of a sickness, you come back stronger if it doesn't really knock you out? Suddenly everything is clearer, the sun, fe everything feels better. I noticed that Obama says that China's South China Sea actions are legitimate, by the way. And I, I guess he didn't call it Chinese privilege. Why hasn't Obama called China's building land uh, islands in the middle of the ocean to put military equipment out there? Aggression, number one. And number two, why is he throwing Japan and the other Southeast Asian nations under the bus? Why isn't that... Chinese privilege, what he's talking about. I mean, he says we have white privilege here. Isn't that Chinese privilege there? Listen to clip 11. And the truth 11. is that China is going to be successful. Oh. It's big. It's powerful. Oh. Its people are talented and they work hard. And Not like us. No. Uh, and it may be that some of their claims are legitimate. Do you believe this? But they, they, they shouldn't just... Uh, Try to establish that based on throwing elbows oh. and pushing people out of the way. No, not like me. If, in fact, their claims are legitimate, people will recognize them. How is this man a president? How does he say these things? Uh, so now he's supporting China's uh, actions, saying some of their claims are legitimate. And then he glorifies the Chinese people, said that the people are talented and they work hard. Not us, though. We, we are only filled with white privilege those of us who are talented and work hard, we suffer from white privilege. They don't suffer from Chinese privilege, though. He reserves that only for the country and the people that he hates the most. Can you believe what we have? All right, we'll go on. You don't care. Phone number here, by the way, if you want to call the show, is 855-107-282. Bill on W. Now, I don't want to take a call on white privilege. It's an invention. It's a construct of the communist left. Now, what's this about the telephone calls? I've assumed that they were listening in on me for a long time now. I told you, hey, just stop talking on the phone about anything. And you live in the, in the dictatorship that Obama created. And if you have something important to say, you meet the person in the supermarket lot at midnight. And you walk around with your hand over your mouth with a toothpick, cleaning your teeth, and you mumble. That way nobody can even pick it up on a, on a, on a distant microphone. I learn a lot from movies. So I watch these movies, all these techniques. I learn never to talk on a, on a, on a personal phone about anything personal. 
We always used to use coin phones, but then they eliminated the coin phone. So what was left? Carry a pigeon or smoke signals, I guess. But I never liked pigeon, pigeons because of psittacosis. So I never kept them. I had a friend, by the way, talking about pigeons. Even in Queens, I don't understand that whole thing with pigeon things and flying. And Where'd that come from? Is that like the poor man's falcons or something? I was thinking about that. Where did the pigeon thing come from? In New York, it was a big thing when I was a kid. Usually in the slums, people kept the pigeon coops. But I had a friend who came from a good family. He had a pigeon coop on his roof. I hated it. Every time I go up there, it stank of the, the guano and the, the feathers, the mites. I mean, years later, I, you learn that they're dirty things, those pigeons. They are flying rats. What's the, what's the big thrill about a, a pigeon coop and flying pigeons? I don't understand it. Does anyone out there know why the pigeon thing is? Do they still do this, uh, Robert? Have you heard about pigeons and pigeon coop? Huh? Is it, do the millennials keep pigeons and fly them around in pigeon coops? Most millennials belong in a pigeon coop. They have the brains of pigeons. Pigeons are smarter than most millennials, by the way. Somebody asked me a question. Why are millennials moving towards libertarianism? That's a simple answer. Because that's the, the poor man, the, the cheap way out of anything is to call yourself a libertarian. Like, what are you? Oh, I'm a libertarian. What does that mean? You think they really know? It means, it means I want to do what I want. and I don't care what you want to do. That makes you a libertarian. That's just an easy answer to everything libertarian someone like the government jester bill mark could call himself a libertarian but he's nothing but a government stooge what do you mean libertarian what does that mean it means you want to do what you want to do and there should be no morality no rules no laws that's a libertarian to most people they don't even know what it means i'm not a libertarian i'm a nationalist i'll be right back Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. By the way, those of you who's listened to, who have listened to the show since 94, you know I haven't changed my message. I have been fighting this fight for the 21 years I'm in radio, and I've lost. I admit it. I know the battle's not over, but I am not going to stop. I will keep going. I will keep telling you like it is. I'll tell you like it is because it is the way it is. I don't care how many Obamas they create in a factory. I don't care what power Geffen and Katzenberg have. They probably look upon me as a bug that they like to crush. I can guarantee you, as I sit here, that a lot of my message reaches them in Hollywood. People record it and play it for them, and they go berserk because they're used to crushing people in Hollywood. Anyone who doesn't cater to Geffen gets crushed. They get thrown out of the business. They don't work another second. So you must sit there and go nuts and say, how do we shut that savage up? How do we get him off the air? What do I do to shut him up? He thinks the whole world is Hollywood. He thinks because he put a marionette in the White House that he controls the world. But guess what? He doesn't control me, and he doesn't control my mind. I will keep exposing these people for who they are, what they've done to this country, and what they just might do again if they elect Hillary Clinton, because they're not through yet with their agenda. They've only just gotten started. There's no such thing as enough money for a very, very sick person. There's no such thing as enough power for a power mad person, none whatsoever. They've gotten almost a total control over, a total control over everything in the United States of America but they don't have control over our minds yet. They thought they did with the imagery coming out of Hollywood, with the control of ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, and CNN. They thought they had control over the news that was going out. They're obsessed, though, with anything that's said about them. I happen to know that for a fact. I'm not going to tell you how I know it. Geffen, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Spielberg are obsessed with any negative statements about themselves. Just as Obama has thousands of people on his payroll, to control his image, just as Hitler did. Sorry to make the analogy, it's just the way it works. Image control, anybody who criticizes them is immediately smeared, or they're not heard from at all, or they're eliminated. That's how it works in a dictatorship. The czars of Hollywood are no different. They run on the same exact principles. They conduct some of the dirtiest work on the planet, and they get away with it because they control what goes out about them, and you don't know what they do. You have no idea what kind of people they really are. 
You have no idea what their vendetta is against this nation. You have no idea how much they hate Christians in the church. You have no idea. If you had any idea, you'd cause a revolution in this country. You wouldn't put up with it for another second. I'm going to go to a caller right now. Patrick, KFAY Radio, welcome to the show. Fire away. You're on the air with Michael Savage and millions of others. What's on your mind? Hi, um, I'm uh, one of those uh, libertarian young uh, conservatives that you were talking about, and I kind of feel like you're giving us a bad rap because we are free uh, But what is a libertarian? Define what libertarian means to you. To me, it must, uh, we believe that people know what's best for them financially and socially. And really? We, and you think that's enough to make a citizen? To know what's best for yourself? Well, yes, you can't have a good democracy without people knowing. Really? And what about what about doing something for the nation other than for your for your for your own selfish uh, me, uh, goals? No, uh, why are you presuming that I'm selfish? What, well, you are selfish. You just said to me you're a libertarian because you know what's best for you. But what are you doing for the nation? What's best for me is best for the nation. Oh, really? In other words, you are the nation. Yes, absolutely. See, this is the limitation of your thinking. John F. Kennedy said it best when he said, ask not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. And that's what's missing in your generation is that you have no idea of service to a nation because you don't even know what a nation is. You have not even defined what America is. What is America to you? America is currently is very corrupt, but it, it used to be still corrupt, but... But, but how would you define any nation? What would a nation be defined by? Would you say my definition of borders, language, and culture is still valid? Yes. It is. For any nation on earth except America, borders, language, and culture define a nation. For every nation on earth except the nation that was destroyed by the most evil, divisive man in the history of America, Barack Obama. But my point, my friend, and it's not to make you uncomfortable, it's to start you thinking about what it means to be an American, what it means to be a libertarian, and that means service to this nation. I don't mean necessarily joining the military, but there are many things that all of the bright millennials could be doing for this nation, but they've never been taught to give anything back to this nation. They've been taught to think only about their own selfish desires and wants. Sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca for your father. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So what we're going through in America is something unique to America. It's not unique to the world. Other countries have died. It's just that we're dying, and many of us feel it, where everything is upside down and backwards. White privilege, of course, is an invention of the Marxist left to take some of the most creative, productive, people in the society and make them ashamed of their productivity and to take people who are let us say not quite as productive and make them feel that they're victims so if they want to punch a teacher in the face run through a hall knock someone off a chair that's fine it's just their cultural prerogative how do you cope with the liberal meltdown of all of our values i know some extremely successful people who began with nothing they began with nothing, zero inheritance, no white privilege, and through brains and guts, they made themselves into extremely wealthy, successful individuals. And these few people that I know who have built their lives like this are now sick to their stomachs as they see this divisive weasel in the White House and what he is doing to America, burning down the city of Baltimore. Half the city was burnt to the ground because of the vile filth that came out of his mouth against white police. The police will not work in Baltimore right now. And the very same uh, uh, ghetto dwellers who hated the police are now saying the police are not there for them. That's what's going on in America. Wherever you turn, you see a country that's having a heart attack because of this man. Now he has the nerve to say one of my core principles is to never divide people. So, so let me go back to that issue. How do you cope with it? I see people who say to me, he's infecting the country in every way he can with an incurable disease. Why are they bringing Syrian refugees to all white communities in Idaho, for example? Why would they do this? It's like bringing a cancer to a Christian community. Did you hear what I said? Send it to Media Matters. Send it to George Soros personally. I'll say it again. Why would the evil devils in the State Department take Syrian refugees, not Christian refugees, mind you, but Muslim 
Syrian refugees who have not been vetted. Some of them could be Al-Qaeda or Al-Nusra. And bring them to an all-white, Christian, cohesive community in North Dakota or wherever they're bringing them. Other than to fracture that community, why would they inject the equivalent of a virus into such a community? Because they will not stop until the country is totally broken in every corner of the land. Now you say, well, wait a minute, I, I know you're right, Michael, but what can I do about it? I feel paralyzed. You know that the Republicans were elected to stop this. You know that that liar, that gullet liar, that liar gullet from Kentucky, that liar, worse than a lame horse, McConnell, and that stew bum drunk, Boehner, you know that they were given the power to stop this maniac. And what did they do? The Republican Party was supposed to stop this agenda. That's why we went to the polls in November. Instead of stopping the evildoers, they have enabled the evildoers. So people say to me, Michael, I can't go on. I can't look at this every day. I get sick. And they ask me what I do. I said, I've been doing it for 21 years. I haven't died yet. So they ask me, how can we live with this? What do we do when we see a country that is dying? Wherever you look, we know the news media what it is. There is no news media. They're just paid stooges. We know guys like Bill Maher, Stephen Colbert, John Stewart have always been government jesters. They either give money directly for the favoritism that they get back, in my estimation, in order to be rewarded by being patted on the head by Obama. Every once in a while they get to go there and have their head patted by Obama, these little boys, and they pretend that they're big, wild, crazy guys as they sip vodka in the Chateau Marmont. But these government jesters are actually the pure evil of our society as well. They're the jesters of the type that were used in the concentration camp to bring people into the ovens thinking that they were being entertained. How do you cope with all of this? You don't know where to turn for relief, do you? The question becomes, how did we get here? And moreover, the bigger question is, how do we get away from these sickos? How do we regurgitate the vomit of the radical Marxist left that has now poisoned every aspect of our society? Well, number one, it goes back to the biggest evildoer in the history of the American presidency, Barack Obama. I bring it all back to him. He ran a campaign against white police for years. Him and Holder and Al Sharpton, one of the most evil men in the history of the country, ran a war against police. Al Sharpton did this in New York City for 20 years with a verminous lawyer, a rat lawyer who made tens of millions of dollars suing the NYPD on false claims of racism. And then he took it national. And then they put Obama in the White House. Now, can you believe you're living in a country where a street rat like Al Sharpton actually selected the new attorney general, Loretta Lynch? Do you know what she is? Do you know what she's done in New York? Well, let's put her aside. Let's look at the evil doer himself. The country was in bad shape before this evil doer came along, culturally. He has now poisoned the culture to the extent that the body is paralyzed. And now he's going through a revisionist phase of revisionist history about himself that would be laughable were it not pathetic and dangerous. Along the lines of every other mad, insane, psychotic dictator that's ever existed, this creature in the White House told an audience that one of his core principles is to never divide people. Now, why would the most divisive president in American history be spending his every day now trying to revise people's knowledge of what he is. They're looking right at him. They know what evil is. They can see it. It comes out of his mouth every time he opens it, turning people against each other, black against white, gay against straight. Wherever you turn, that's the man's entire lifestyle built upon what he learned as a radical street agitator from the Alinsky method. You can look at the story yourself on the Gateway Pundit, which I linked up on michaelsavage.com, or I want you to listen now to the president, and I want you to listen to him lying as he catches himself reading his own lie. You can hear he's stunned by what someone wrote for him. Listen in four. One of my core principles is that uh, uh, I will never engage in a politics in which I'm trying to divide people or make them... Did you hear? Wait, Less than me. Did you hear him pause on that? He knows it's such a lie. He knows it's the opposite of who he is. He knows that his entire M.O. is divisiveness. So we got one of his six sorority girls, one of the drug addicts who work for him, to write this filth 
And this guy stumbles on his own lie because he can't believe what they wrote for him. One of these sick girls who work for him. Listen carefully and tell me if you didn't hear what I just heard. I'm an expert. There's nobody better than me. Nobody has better ears than me in the history of the media ever. I just heard this man stumble on his own lie. He could not believe that he, they gave this to him to read. Listen to this. One of my core principles is that uh, I will never engage in a politics in which I'm trying to divide people or make them less than me because they look different or have a different uh, religion. That's a core principle. I, that's not something I would violate. Now, why would he have to say a thing like this when he knows it's a lie? The girls who work for him know he's in trouble. The girls who work for him know that he's the most divisive president in history and everybody knows the king has no clothes. So let me pause right there. I want to shift out to something entirely different. And Bernie Sanders is out there on the hustings telling everyone how bad America is, pushing for socialism, and what he really wants to do is uh, establish a radical United States government, single-payer health care system. He would abolish tuition fees for in-state higher education. Everyone should get a free college education. Sounds nice. I would have liked that. Who would pay for it? You would. He would drive big money out of U.S. politics. No kidding. Tell that to Hillary Clinton. He would redistribute income. What does that mean? Right now, there's a graduate income tax, which is as fascistic and unfair as, as they come. Why should a high earner pay a higher rate of tax than a low earner? Why shouldn't there be a flat tax? Well, have you thought about that? He would increase Social Security benefits. Now, who doesn't want that? If you're on Social Security, wouldn't you want to increase Social Security benefits? So you can go to an Indian gambling casino and sit there with, with the chips in your hand, with your shaky diabetes arm, the upper arm shaking with the flab hanging down, with the cigarette in your mouth and the cup full of chips. He would break up the too-big-to-fail Wall Street banks. As you know, Wall Street's always been a target of people. And he's making believe he's against Wall Street when, in fact... He knows and I know that you get nowhere without Wall Street. And frankly, let's look at Wall Street. It's all not, not that all evil. I mean, they do fund businesses. Most of your new businesses were funded through Wall Street. So what are you talking about? Do they even know what they're talking about? Let me break it down for you. We'll go on to other topics. The next time you're sitting in New York City or San Francisco or Chicago or Washington and um, someone brings up the idea of, you know, socialism's not a bad idea. We really... I really think it would work quite well here. Tink, tink, says the cocktail drinker. So ask them a question. Why is it that when Haitian refugees risk their lives trying to get to Florida in homemade boats, Florida, remember, from Haiti is almost 500 miles away. Why would they risk 500 miles in an open sea in a broken little homemade boat to get to the evil capitalist empire of America when they could have gone just 50 miles from Haiti to the workers' paradise of Fidel Castro in Cuba. I think that sort of ends the argument. Are the Haitians stupid? Or do they know that this evil capitalist empire called America is the greatest system that was ever created despite all of its flaws? The greatest place where the greatest good for the greatest number uh, happens to prevail. So again, use that analogy. Haitians, homemade boats, fleeing Haiti... Why did they not go 50 miles to the workers' paradise of Cuba on the Fidel Castro? Why did they risk their lives and go 500 miles to get to the evil America, the capitalist America? Try that on your college uh, student daughter when she comes home from Harvard. Now, there's another fatal defect of socialism, and that is the disregard that socialism has for the role of private property rights, uh, period. Private property rights don't exist in a socialist, in a pure socialist government. If everyone in America owned land together, everybody would act as if no one owned it. Take a look at Baltimore. They didn't even own that land. They burnt it to the ground, the thugs that Obama couldn't get enough of. And when no one owns it, no one will, will take care of it. Look at the public housing in America. Look at public housing and how the people abuse it, how they treat it like a, like, what's the word I'm looking for, like, like a cesspool. Why do people in public housing treat their own housing like garbage? Because they don't own it. Why don't they own it? Because they don't have the money to own it. We, the people, say, all right, look, they can't live in the street. Let's give them some public housing. Well, the least you would figure is they would take care of their housing, but they don't. Take a look at the sad state of public housing projects across America, and you will see exactly how socialism works. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. We know that we are in a cultural war with Islam. Some call it a religious war. It could be called a religious political war or a cultural war. It's somewhat of a cultural war between the vile filth of the West and the 9th century uh, primitive view of the radical Muslims. So it's Katzenberg and Geffen and the others it's against the radical Muslim view. And right now, after Katzenberg and company have destroyed the American soul and mind, they're uh, now in a conflict with radical Islam. And so in the Middle East, they don't want their filthy movies. They come to this country, and whether or not they want Sharia law, whether or not they hate America is irrelevant. What's relevant is they don't want the filth and the violence that's created by the Hollywood filth factories in their home. No, they don't want their daughter to sleep with a girl. No, they don't want their Muslim son to be gay married to a man. No, they don't want it. In fact, they'd rather kill them than let that happen. But you don't hear about that in the daily news. They like you to believe that uh, they're as tolerant as you are, that their defenses have been destroyed just as yours have been, but they, they really haven't. So they're at it again. And I realize that many of you don't understand what I'm saying or you find this so offensive that you've turned the show off. Well, I can't help that. It's too late in American history for me to mince words. So mince words, I will not. And so we're talking about this. Now, in the middle of all of this, we have the most divisive left-wing fanatic in the history of government. It's hard to imagine a more radical person becoming president than this guy. If you would have selected the head of the Ku Klux Klan to run on the Republican ticket and say he would win, I would say, you're insane. Rightly so, who would want him to win? Nobody. You have the equivalent of the Ku Klux Klan running America on the left-wing side. I stick by those words. In other words, you have equally radical left and right, don't you? But you have a hater in the White House that's so powerful and so devious in his ability to get his message across that he can do virtually anything he wants without opposition. So today we wake up and it gets even worse. Apparently it's seeping back to the girls who run his campaigns and his image, rather, that America's finally on to him. They see that he's a king without clothes. He's the amazing, transparent president. He, asked, he said he'd have the most transparent administration in history, which is the opposite of what he has. It's a spy network like the Stasi in Eastern Europe uh, that, thank God, was stopped by Rand Paul, just for a little while anyway. And now he gets up, and the girls who run his image say, look, they're on to the fact that you're a lying, devious divider. We have to cover that up. So they give him a speech to read. You've got to listen to this again. In all of the listening I've ever done to, to politicians, this clip that I'm about to play for you will demonstrate without a doubt that he himself choked on the lie that he was reading. Listen to clip four. He was stunned by what they wrote for him. One listen. of my core principles is core. that core. Uh, I will never engage in a politics in which a politics? I'm trying to divide people or make them less than me because they okay, look different. Right. Or if you listen to this, if you were in a CIA language laboratory and I were your instructor, I would say we have a man here who is so embarrassed by what he's reading. Notice what I'm going to play it again over and over again. We're going to do it like we're in a classroom in the CIA Language Institute. I want you to listen to him when he stumbles on the word divide, number one. And then when he emphasizes the core, core principles, they taught him that at Harvard, how to roll his R's, core, how he says core, that worked for him very well with the rubes of America. They think he was an educated, literate man. He will never engage in a politics. Listen carefully again and tell me if you actually think that he is not stunned at, at what the girls wrote for him. One of my core principles is that uh, I, I will never engage in a politics in which Pause. I'm trying Pause. to divide people or he, make oh, them. You know to divide people? He didn't even want to. The word itself, it couldn't come out of his mouth. He learned division in the Alinsky School of Division of Divide and Conquer. Okay, we've covered that. Have we covered it? I don't think so. I feel like I'm in a fever listening to this. When is it going to end? When is this brainwashing going to end? When is the psychosis of this president going to be exposed for what it is? When? When will he be stopped? When? When?